Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Play Prince of Persia Classic with Frozen Foxy. I was um, watching a certain Necroscope 86 playing this a little while ago, and enjoying all of his failures um, in this game. They were, they were quite funny, in all honesty, but um, I was sad to see that uh, he was unable to complete the game. Because this game is fantastic, and he ended up um, not being able to complete it mainly because he ran into a glitch that uh, that caused his game to just completely fail before he could even get on to uh, the second level. Now he had uh, he had called this a very very hard game, and um, honestly, I may make this look a little bit easy, and that's. That is mainly because uh, this used to be one of my favorite, favorite childhood games. I used to play this thing all the time. Now, given I cannot play this nearly as uh, good as I once had, but um, I still know a few things here and there. Um, I actually played through this a little while ago just to remember how to play it, you know? Um, and it was a lot of fun to play through again. It really was. Um, and I also had my fiance here, and she uh, she ran through some things that I had never even tried to go through in the past. And I was like, "Wow, that's crazy! I should try doing that." So um, now I can more or less do what she was doing. But. Um, I felt that I couldn't leave this unfinished. It's, it's just such a great game. And um, watching Necroscope 86 play it kind of rekindled something in me for it. I remember um, long ago the first video game that I actually got to play was um, this game called uh, Mario Brothers. Maybe some of you remember it, but... Um, it was it was a uh, it was a combination cartridge, uh, Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt on Nintendo, which was not my Nintendo at all. Um, it was a friend of mine's, uh, and it was it was a lot of fun. That was that was a very very first game that I ever managed to play. I didn't actually get a Nintendo of my own until oh I don't know. I was probably around 10 or 11, and by that point, uh, the Super Nintendo had already run its course, and they were getting ready to put out the Nintendo 64, so I was, I was way behind the curve at that point. I had the Sony PlayStation out already, um, but I, I had a lot of fun with the Nintendo. That's really neither here nor there, though, because... Um, that says nothing about uh, how I got into playing this game. Um, playing this game, basically, I uh, had just moved to Colorado, and um, I was probably around seven years old or so, and um, there was a computer system at um, one of my mom's friend's places, and uh, this was on it, along with 
Doom and some other things. And I really, really got into this, whereas Doom um, gave me nightmares. So as a little kid, I was freaked out of Doom. Not, not any longer. I never really got into Doom, mainly because of um, getting freaked out, I guess. But um, technically, I played Doom a little bit. As well as this, but this one was the uh, the one that I really played the most as a kid. Um, I think I, I used to play this for I don't know maybe hours and hours on end till I uh, till I was just able to get through the entire thing. Nowadays, I I will play games for hours on end just to um, enjoy them. Um, and, and get through them. I do that for Let's Plays and stuff, but as a kid, that was, uh, that was tough for me. I, I was, uh, able to fall asleep pretty quickly when, uh, when I was in the middle of these things. I've, I remember a few times that I had, uh, passed out while trying to play games like this for a long time. But this was the one that I played a whole lot. I got to know everything about the game and uh, how to get through each of the levels, what I needed to do to go as fast as I possibly could. I can't do that anymore. I used to be able to beat this game in 15 minutes, and I have no idea how I did that. That's absolutely ridiculous because I can't come anywhere close to that any longer. I don't know what I did. But um, I still have fun with this game. I still have a lot of fun with this game. It's absolutely fantastic. As I'm not even talking about the game whatsoever right now. But um, yeah, I, I kind of like talking about the history of, of how I got to um, enjoy games that I enjoy today. This is the place uh, that my fiance ran through, and I was like, there is absolutely no way that I can manage to do that. And then I watched her do that, and I was like, oh, I can do that. That's actually really easy. I was like, I don't know why I was so afraid of trying to go through these uh, these chompers here. Because they're, they're actually ridiculously easy to go through. Even though that they, uh, they look pretty intimidating. This was this was a bit of a scary game to play as a kid, I suppose. But I I really adored playing this. So many so many good memories about this. Very nostalgic. I remember alongside this, I would um I'd play quite a few adventure games as well. I remember playing uh, King's Quest a lot. I think it was um, King's Quest V. And um, I used to play Full Throttle a whole lot as well. That was a lot of fun. Adventure games were really awesome back in the day. They still are today. There's just not quite as many of them. Tim Schafer at the moment is um, actually working on bringing back some adventure games, at the very least, because he had a Kickstarter going on that uh, gave a lot of uh, hope for the the adventure genre because there was just um, there was just a lot of support on that, and so I'm I'm hoping that adventure games will uh, will make a good comeback from that. I mean. Uh, stuff like Telltale Games has uh, has been putting out some pretty cool Sam and Max stuff, and uh, they did. I think they did uh, The Walking Dead recently, which was um, which was pretty neat. I I really need to get around to playing that because that game looks absolutely awesome, in my opinion. And I am going to get myself killed on this skeleton. I am just not playing up to par with what I should be playing. Mainly because I'm just talking about random stuff, and I usually don't talk about random stuff while I'm um, playing these games. I usually, uh, I usually talk about the game in front of me. So this is a little bit different. But I, I still like playing it like this. 
So who out there has, uh, has played Full Throttle? That game was amazing. Highly recommend that game if you've, uh, if you've never played that game before. It was just absolutely fantastic. I, I may go ahead and, uh, and try to play Full Throttle if I ever get the chance. It will be um, difficult to do, mainly because uh, it was, I think, a Windows 95 game, so Windows 95 games are a little bit complicated to get working. It's not, uh, not quite as easy as doing it on DOSBox, as far as I know. It might be, I don't know. I would really like to do that game if I can manage it somehow. Just because Full Throttle was such a fantastic game. Basically anything that Tim Schafer made was always really great back in the day. Loved his stuff. But yeah, I, I kind of... Um, I started working on um, one of the, uh, the newer Prince of Persia games, Sands of Time, which um, I kind of canceled, which was mainly because I didn't feel I was doing it justice. I, I thought maybe since I had played uh, this original Prince of Persia so much, I could uh, end up doing that game a good bit of justice, but it, it turns out that my skills from uh, this game do not roll over whatsoever into um, into the newer Prince of Persia games. So I, I ended up uh, I ended up putting that away because it, it didn't feel like it was um, it was a worthwhile pursuit. I might go back and. Um, and start that over again. I'm not sure right now, but uh, at the moment, I've I've put away Prince of Persia: The Sands of Time. It's a good game, absolutely good game. I'm just not as good at it as I would uh, as I would hope to be. Maybe someday. Maybe someday. I, I'd have to practice it. Mirror. Oh no, my soul. I always remember uh, seeing that as a kid and being like, what exactly does that mean? What did that do to me? It was it was always so mysterious until I could um, I could really manage to get further into the game and uh, and figure out what that was all about. But uh, early on, I had no idea what that meant. It was just odd to me. You actually, you actually get to see your uh, your shadow or your soul or whatever you want to call it um, right here if you want to. There is there's a way that you can um, manage to get this potion from your shadow, but I have never ever managed to uh, to properly do it. That is not the way to do it. <laughs> that was that was fantastic though. First death. Awesome. Oh, we on level five? That's pretty good for a first death. I knew I would probably die at least once or twice in this game because I haven't played in so long. Sadly, when those guys fall down there, you don't actually get to see um, their corpses down there. I've, uh, I've gone down and checked for that corpse because I was like, oh, it would be cool to... Uh, to see him fall down into that hole, but uh, that never actually happens there, sadly enough. Let's do this properly now. So if you slide around, you can actually... That is totally not what I was trying for. But as you can see, um, that guy will come and drink the potion. Um, one way that you can sort of get that potion yourself is to... Uh, to go lock the door on him. I've never been able to do it. He always seems to phase through the door for me, and I'm not going to show it off any longer, but um, I've never managed to get that particular potion. It, it always eludes me. 
maybe someone on here uh, will be able to reply with a video where they uh, they manage to get that potion, but I am not going to be the person who manages to get that potion. I mainly wanted to show that the shadow would uh, would appear there, even though I ended up screwing myself. But yeah, what you're supposed to do is uh, is turn around and jump right on back through so that you hit that panel down below and that will actually lock out the shadow from uh, getting that potion but um, I've never gotten it to work never managed to do it oh well doesn't matter there are plenty of other potions to be uh, to be found in this game ones that will not elude me because my shadow tries to steal them from me. The uh, soldiers around here, they start getting a little bit uh, more effective. So you can't always uh, just run up to them and try and try to kill them like I've been doing. Doesn't really matter. They're still they're still pretty ridiculously easy in my opinion once you know how to fight properly. Come on, buddy. Let's finish you off. Now, I remember playing um, Prince of Persia 2 a long time ago and really, really enjoying that game. It's, it's basically an enhanced version of this game. When I first played this game, I think um, it had maybe two colors. It was like uh, green and black at the time. And then um, later on, it, uh, it became a four color game. I think this one is possibly 16 colors, something like that. But uh, I loved it in all its forms. I really did. I just played the hell out of this game. So much fun to play. Uh, screwed up that little run there. Oh well. There used to be a faster way to do this, but I cannot remember it. The only fat soldier you can find in this entire game. And he is pretty badass. You can get into some serious uh, sword play with this guy. I'm gonna try and... Uh, Make sure to get through here before he kills me, though. There we go. That worked out pretty well. Usually he gives me some, uh, some trouble. My bastard shadow locking me out there. What a mm. jerk. But that just brings us down to level 7 here. I always liked that, uh, that level transition. That was, that was so unique to this game. I thought it was just this sudden fall, and then you were in a different level. If you do this properly, you can uh, knock this guy into this thing behind him, making lots and lots of noise, but um, I obviously did not do that particularly proper there. Otherwise, we would have uh, seen a guy chopped in half there. And that just did not happen. I, I've always enjoyed that, um, having that particular guy chopped. Just because later on you'll actually end up passing where he's dead. And so he'll still be there. This is uh, one of the first games I remember playing where the, uh, the corpses were left around besides uh, Doom. And it was it was really neat to have a game that uh, that left the corpses around, because there was there was a lot of limitations back then where they would make things disappear. Even today we see that uh, with with games like Dishonored, where you don't uh, you don't have the corpses sticking around, which is kind of funny because apparently there is a way of. Um, Keeping the corpses around, you can edit some uh, some I and I file, and um, then you can have more corpses around on the PC version. So I guess the reason that they had uh, 
they had done it for um, Dishonored to begin with was because they were uh, they were trying to um, do it for the Xbox version or the PS3 version, something like that. But it really wasn't necessary for the, uh, the PC version. I guess um, they weren't really thinking about optimizing it for the PC. Which is fine, really. I can deal with corpses disappearing. I just kind of think that it, um, it takes out a little bit of the challenge of the game because the, the corpses or or uh, unconscious bodies, they're not around any longer to be discovered by NPCs and make it more difficult. I really like that about um, Thief, because in Thief you, uh, you often had the corpses still, still appearing, which was, um, which was nice. I always love backing this guy in the corner. I find that quite humorous to just back him in the corner and just keep stabbing him. He can't do anything. He's just totally screwed there. I really enjoy that. I have no idea why I enjoy that so much, but I do. So that, um, that health potion that I got, you can technically go to, uh, once you get to the final door of this level, with uh, this really neat little green potion here, which there's, I think, only three of these green potions in the game. This is the only useful one. And normally what you would do is you would go through here and hit this panel to open the door. If you keep going, that potion will be over there, but this door starts uh, going down really, really quickly, and that ends up uh, getting you trapped over there, and you can't beat this level. So um, the only way to get that health potion is jumping across the way I did. And if you don't know that there's anything over there, you'll totally miss that.